I'm Britton Clenet and welcome to China Insight, where we discuss the latest issues affecting this rapidly changing country. Well, in the past several decades, migration from the countryside has expanded the urban population by around 500 million. Rapid urbanization can come at a cost for Chinese cities, let alone to the people who live there. So what about a taste of life in the country? That's what one government program is offering Chinese youth. The chance to become a so-called youth village official after they graduate. To learn about life in China's rural areas. To find out more about this program, I'm joined by Tang Min, the councillor of China State Council. Welcome to the program. Okay. Could you help clarify for us what is a youth village official? After graduate from uh, college, they spend the two years in the village and the hardship also understand the, the uh, village people how they're working, what their life and how to addressing some of the needs. Mm -hmm. and though this uh, is a volunteer, you have to apply, you mm -hmm. have to get a special approval, you have to have some qualification and so on. And uh, those people, because this is already more than 10 years, mm -hmm. And those graduate from this program, uh, they are very happy, and they learn a lot, and they feel they uh, it's really benefit the whole their life mm -hmm. because they know what is a uh, difficult life. Okay, well, I want to find out more about that experience. I'm very interested to know what that was like. That's something we talked about in the following clip. China Insight traveled to Zhejiang Province to find more about this so-called youth village official program. Let's take a look. Our quest to find out about China's so-called youth village officials takes us to the eastern coastal province of Zhejiang. Carved up by rivers and valleys, Zhejiang is known for its natural beauty and has a long history of farming, forestry and fishing. It's there we meet Liu Mi, who attributes much of her business success today to her time as a youth village official. Liu Mi, now 36, was selected straight from university to join the government program which encourages recent graduates to rediscover the Chinese countryside and take advantage of what rural life has to offer. Youth village officials, also known as little village officials, are sent to rural areas across China to help boost the local economy through learning about the geography and what hardships are faced by the locals and studying how best to implement government policies. After serving several years in the countryside, some will go on to join the civil service, while others, like Liu Mi, will start up their own business. She made the most of a low-interest government loan available to former youth village officials to set up a packaging and wrapping factory. But, she says the experience gave her much more than business success, it enabled her to connect with country folk. I 然后慢慢地我知道这是正常的一个现象。爸爸,这是啥位啊? being out in the field and learning about agricultural work was no easy task for this city girl. To get her head around the tricks of the trade, it took a lot of listening to the local farmers. One of the main things that these so-called little village officials are encouraged to do is to talk one-on-one -on -one with the farmers, to get to know the issues they face, to learn about growing techniques, and to get to know their way of life, which might be very different to the one they lead. According to Liu Mi, getting to know the situation of the people in the village was a big part of her success 
and remains important to her business today. That's why she often visits villagers' homes and sits down with them in an effort to build trust. <音>那所以他吃了哇走沙威了哇走了地等到了我不下地咋样不了肯呢然后我就是自己去摸索经常跟他们接触然后主动的跟他们说大家如果有什么需要我可以帮你们去跟这里面衔接农业部林业部都可
And so she decided to help them vamp up their business and broaden their consumer base. To get to know the industry, it requires spending time with the tea pickers in high altitude areas. It's spring, prime time to pick tea. Despite being five months pregnant, she makes the trek up to visit the farmers to see how this year's crop has turned out. Uh,但是可能不多啊,也没有渠道,最传统的就是到附近的农贸市场去卖。最近的商场人多的地方去卖。这个就是比较传统的模式。我呢,可以利用就是年纪轻人都会玩微博啊,微信啊,然后发散的
you know, the city buzz, having shopping malls, having the accessibility that a city provides, uh, the transport links and that kind of thing, and then going into these remote areas, it's quite tough, isn't it? Yes, it's so quite tough for them, but it's also the benefit to, for them. If everything just like, like in the city, right. then what you can learn from that, right? And you have a, a different life and a different uh, environment, mm -hmm. and you can learn a lot of which you cannot learn in the college and cannot learn from your urban uh, life. Right. So this is one, and it's very helpful. And not, all help, not only help them, and also help, help the villagers. And right. they, they did a lot of good things to the villagers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in China, majority of poverty is still in the rural area. They need help. Mm -hmm. And that those young people come, uh, went down to there to provide some assistance to them. And both sides will benefit from that. Right. And, and you, exactly, you've listed some of the benefits here. I just, I just wonder why you know, at, at a very basic level, why the program exists to begin with. Okay, now, this is starting, I think, in the mid-1990s, mm -hmm. right? And at the very beginning, government officials need uh, the young people to join. And uh, it's usually, it's take examination, civil servants examination, mm -hmm. and you're doing good, answer a good question, you get a high score, and you go to the uh, uh, come up to become a government officials. Mm -hmm. Then gradually they find that's not enough because those uh, from college to uh, to the government uh, government uh, unit, and they have no experience. They do not know how to deal with the people. Right. They have no experience how hard those uh, what the, those people they have to service. Right. And and the the issues that they face. That's something that we tried. We we discovered as well uh, in in shooting this that you know that it was really about getting to know the issues they face and, and how exactly. to address those issues. That's right, that's right. And they, you can see for the program, they, they were uh, cadres also helped them. Mm. And so gradually after two years or some of them stay there four years and they become very uh, familiarized of those, uh, how to deal with the people. Right. Usually about one third of them uh, after graduate from this program, they apply for civil servants, right. and they could become a government officials, and gradually they're moving up. Mm -hmm. right. Some of them, they start their own business, because mm. they are working there, and they find, right. oh, this is a lot of opportunities. Mm. And they help the farmer, in the meantime, they can help, help themselves. So they start their own business there. Right. And so then I wonder if it's about broadening the program, or you know, taking in more applicants, or, or, or perhaps yeah, expanding the program across China more. Right, but you know, it's a cost. Of course. And secondly, whether there are so many vocations, uh, 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 positions, mm. right? Because each village is only one, and you cannot do yeah. too many. So what I was informed every year, that like now it's 200,000. Mm -hmm. So this is a quite a big number. Yeah. Right, but compare with every year we have a usually 7 million of a college graduates. It's just a drop in the still, ocean. It's yeah. still a small number, right. but they're already working very hard in a rural area. Mm. Uh, probably, I agree with you, in future, if this program success, and maybe they should expand a little more. Tamin, mean, you, you before drew comparisons between you know, this, this program, perhaps the Peace Corps or other youth programs around the world. How is this program, this youth village official program, unique to China? OK, now, Peace Corps is go abroad, mm. right? So in the United States, go abroad. Here, it's only in China, mm -hmm. inside the country, right? Um, only to the rural area. Um, also, probably this is uh, largely organized by government. This, is a, this program is a, a organized, uh, uh, promoted by government. And a lot of those people apply this program, they're targeting to uh, working for the government in future. Mm. So that's why uh, almost uh, one third of it uh, in the end is uh, apply for a civil service job. Mm. Um, this program also have a very intensive trainings, and mm. during they are in the village, and they getting training, and this training is not necessarily a like classroom type training, that maybe internet based training. Um, so I think that 
It that's is. It's very like, hands-on. You're right. It's not. Yeah. It's not something that you just learn through a textbook. You have to that's be right. there. Yeah, but there right. and the, there are people help you. Mm. So that's. I think that's. Uh, it's a quite a, a successful program. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. in a broader sense, how has this program, um, in your eyes, been beneficial to you know the nation as a whole? Okay. Or how now, can it be beneficial in the future? Right. You know. Nowadays, in Chinese family, usually only one one child, uh, one child. Mm -hmm. and although potentially that could change. Yeah, uh, in future, but mm -hmm. this one uh, mm -hmm. they're getting spoiled, right? right. And and they're from uh, school to school, they do not have much experience, mm. so they have a lot of fantasy in college. They think all oh, the life is they should be this or that. They don't have a hardworking experience or they do not prepare right. for that right. right and if the whole society like this and in the end may not be good you need the leadership mm -hmm. and you, you need the people really have a, a sense to the whole societies you really want to serve the people mm -hmm. and that program they have a group a small group those small but can be expanding and these people can um, can uh, addressing this and give some experience um, in in China still you know in rural areas still uh, 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 now currently still have a seven seventy million poverty people mm. right and the very uh, some of the, the mountain areas are still very poor right and need the help uh, and those people can bring this uh, fresh air to there right. Right. Um, also. In, and finally, government officials need the fresh uh, for the uh, young people to join. Right. And these people with this some experience in the village, mm -hmm. and that will help the government can getting uh, the younger people get, get to grips with the issues yeah, that faced right. by people in rural areas. That's right. Um, and at the same time, toughening up, toughening them up, and and uh, you know putting them in the driving seat, so to speak. Um, but I also wonder, you know, as, as China undergoes this, this urbanization, uh, how this plays into, into the picture, whether this is kind of helping, um, drawing people from the cities to the villages. Okay. Now, urbanization is a trend, mm -hmm. but still, so far, still 500 million people in the village, yes. in the rural in area. The rural, in the Those people need help. Right? Yeah. And also, even the... Uh, urbanization in and still have some farmers in the uh, in the rural area. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe in the future still have a three hundred million. A three hundred million is still a big right. number. And you know we need <laughs> vegetables to be grown. We need exactly. You know, we yeah. need people in countryside. That's right. I mean, so that's clear. the countryside still need the help. Right. Right. And you need a lot of people understand what they need, mm. and you need a good uh, program to help them. Mm -hmm. So in the end, you need the people to do that, okay. addressing this issue. Um, so this is another contradiction with the organization, mm -hmm. and actually they would help the organization. And there are two ways. And some of the farmers, they find a job in the, rural, uh, in the urban area. Mm -hmm. Some of the people, if they believe or they like it, they can move in the rural area. Okay, yeah. stay with us because we're going to take a very short break. We'll be back. Welcome back to China Insight. Well, I've been discussing the so-called Youth Village Officials Program with Tang Min, the Councillor of China's State Council. Well, would you move to the country? If you aren't there already, that is, what would it take? We asked that question to several people in Beijing. Let's take a look. Nongchun现在是主要看是什么地方，可能是发达一点的地方的话，可能会会什么一点，因为毕竟一直都在城市工作嘛。如果是年轻的话，可能可以去闯，应该是可以去的。应该不愿意，因为我觉得我一直呃读书啊，工作都会在城市里面。应该我还是愿意的，就是我觉得农村现在发展的都挺好的。第二就是那边的空气质量什么
为了进一步的发展嘛。Are those the answers you'd kind of expect? Yeah, and yeah. the majority of people still don't want spend too much time in yeah. the rural area, and、uh, of course, in the lifetime, the majority of people still move to the cities,、mm -hmm. and because there's an opportunity there, job there, and and the good life is in the urban area. Right. So, but this for short period. Two years, one year, two years, or three years,、right. and that's possible. You know, we talked about urbanisation. There are more and more, you know, farmers who kind of pack up shop and go to the cities. Do you think more policies should be developed to, to you know, keep these farmers in these rural areas to help develop the local economy there? Right. I think、uh, we should not force them. Yeah. It's first, if they. Like the urban life, they want to do that and、uh, go ahead, right?、Mm -hmm. And why so many people don't want to stay in the village because they do not have uh, enough uh, environment, or they don't have a good、uh, infrastructure,、mm -hmm. and or do not have a、uh, even do not have a、uh, a good、uh, transportation, or so、mm -hmm. so they feel. Stay there, do not have much opportunity, cannot make money, so they move to the urban area.、Mm -hmm. um, but you know, other country you cannot say you have no farm at all, and you cannot import all the farm product. So China still need a good agriculture sector.、Mm. That means it still need the people stay in the village.、Mm. Some of the people, not all, right? Not just China. Where I'm from, Australia, we also need. You know, we need、yeah. to rely on but, but domestic growing. But you know, the problem is、growing. now in China, a lot of place. The, in the rural area, only have old people there, right? And no young people at all, right? Because there's no, not much income, not、right. much opportunity there. So government have to have a policy to make those environment, the business environment, better.、Mm. And a few, some of the young people, they are willing to stay home to doing the farm business. So, so then that could involve, you know.、Um, Providing subsidies, more subsidies to people、uh, in rural areas, to farmers, to you know, so that they are you know、uh, dealing with modern equipment, so that you know to help their process,、uh, their job, make make their job easier. Yeah, not only the subsidies, maybe just equalize what we call the equalize of uh, uh, public service. Right. Because in China, it's a bit unfair in the urban area. Public service, so school,、mm -hmm. hospital, and the, uh, a road, a water supply, everything's so good,、mm -hmm. relatively. Right. And rural, there are no such things. Right. So they do not have a good opportunity. They do not have a good roads. And how can you ship your farm product? Yeah.、Uh, to the urban area,、mm -hmm. or if very costly, they cannot compete. So in that sense, government first have to. Equalize of the public service.、Mm, thank you very much for coming on the program, Tom Min. Yeah, you're welcome. If you have any comments or questions, please email us at chinainsight@cctv.com, or you can find us on Facebook, Weibo, and WeChat. And we'll see you next time for more stories and discussion on China out of China. Goodbye.